After months of digging in the dirt, harvest finally arrives. And for some, thoughts of a mouth-watering meal of fresh fruits and vegetables comes to mind, while for others, the hard work has just begun. Much of what comes out of these community gardens has to be cleaned, packaged, and delivered to local organizations and farmers markets throughout the county. Now, one of the longtime organizers is Maurice Small, co-director of City Fresh Enterprise. Maurice, welcome to the show. Dee, it's a wonderful pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> well, we were watching a piece on uh, the George Jones Memorial Farm, and I wanted to have you talk about um, that farm and its connection to City Fresh. The farm is there to support the uh, City Fresh program in many ways, not just uh, food-wise, but educationally, um, spiritually, and physically. The farm is run by a wonderful young man named Aaron Englander, and Aaron works with a team of volunteers. The farm has a CSA program, which is Community Supported Agriculture. That CSA program is very important in the Oberlin community. They do a farmer's market in downtown Oberlin on Saturday mornings, in season of course, and most importantly, they help City Fresh with their greens, uh, the greens being cabbage, okra, Oak is not a green, but you know, tails, collards, things like that. Yeah. So why does City Fresh exist? What's its purpose? Hmm. City Fresh D is a program that changes people's lives. The lives are changed because of the opportunity that City Fresh brings to a local neighborhood. Many neighborhoods are devoid of fresh food, fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. City Fresh changes that by once a week for four hours or so, creating a marketplace where fresh fruits and vegetables are brought in from within 75 miles of downtown Cleveland. From there, there is a, uh, a forest of growth, as it were, of volunteers that come in to help unload the truck, set the produce up, bag it, take the money, place the orders for next week, and people go home with a bag of produce that lasts them a whole week. And, and from what I know about it, it's, it's not the sort of thing where if you see a city fresh table at the farmer's market, you can just walk up and say, give me some of that, some of that. That is correct. With the CSA Model D, there is the point of you're buying into something and you don't really have a say into what you get, but you're gonna get a balanced meal in that bag. You're gonna get proper nutrition, you're gonna get a variety of fruits and a variety of vegetables. You can't just walk up and pick up two tomatoes, a cucumber and um, a watermelon. You have to get two tomatoes, a cucumber, a watermelon, a squash, two bags of lettuce, some greens, some snap peas, um, two peaches, and a pear. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that sounds exactly like a very good thing. And, and then do you run into people who say, you know what, I don't know what to do with this vegetable or, or that fruit, and, and can you guide them? That happens all the time. Um, a lot of the people in the city that we serve, and this is important, we serve them something that they don't quite know what it is because the local stores don't carry it. Um, why are these beans yellow? They're yellow wax beans. They're the same as green beans, but they're yellow. What is this odd looking thing? Oh, it's a kohlrabi. Why is the uh, lettuce red? Well, it's not iceberg lettuce, it's a red cabbage. So we're there to help them understand the importance of eating it, how to prepare it, and number one, what it is. In in terms of the people who are running City Fresh, is this something that you grew up with, this knowledge of, of what's good and good for you? Yes, I was raised vegetarian. My mother and my father insisted that um, I be raised vegetarian for religious reasons. And when you're raised vegetarian and those around you eat meat, you have nothing else to do but find out what's going on with my diet, what's going on with their diet. So being aware of food at an early age has really developed into this, you know, entity that sits next to you right now. <laughs> and, and you talk about food. I've heard you do it in, in many different settings in a way that's different from a lot of people. For uh, most of us, it's just something you shovel in and, and you hope it runs your body. But for you, it's something else. It's life. Um, no matter where I go, <clears throat> And no matter who I speak with, there's food involved. And it's not, that's the way it's planned. It's the way it is. We as humans need to consume something. The plants, the worms, the hawks, the deer, they all need to eat something. And as you're eating something, you're aware of it. 
you're aware of how it affects you in two hours or two days or two weeks because there's a reaction. And when these reactions occur in our bodies, sometimes we ignore them. And sometimes we're like, wow, that food was really good. Young people are really aware of their food. So I try to keep a, a young person's attitude and just smile and explore the food before I eat it, you know, and make sure that it smells good and make sure that it, you know, it's just pleasing to the eye first and foremost. And then the smell and then it comes in and it's, oh, there it goes. <laughs> I like that. I watched you in a recent movie that was at the Cleveland International Film Festival, mm -hmm. Polycultures. How did it feel to be part of that movie experience, talking about um, growing local food and, and consuming it? It felt as it was being um, filmed over the course of two or three years. It felt natural. Because just like now, it feels natural to talk to you about this because it's something I believe in. Seeing it on film is something totally different because as one's being filmed or taped or recorded, you don't think about, I don't think about, you know, what that is. It's just a conversation that we're having. But when you see it or you hear it later, it becomes, you know, wow, that's part of me. That's part of my fiber. And being a part of that or a part of this movement in Northern Ohio, and if not east of the Mississippi, it feels good because I have colleagues that also feel the same way. And as I watch them or hear them, hear their recordings, we're all on the same page and we're all striving towards the same goals. And these goals are the betterment of the people that are around us, you know, and that means you too, Dee. Oh, that's so sweet. We want to take care of you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll eat better. <laughs> Maurice, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Dee, my pleasure. My guest has been Maurice Small, co-director of City Fresh Enterprise. You can find out more about urban gardening and sign up for the City Fresh program by logging onto our website at wviz.org, where you'll find a link to their homepage, or call 216-220-5532 for more information.